Hey, over here, zoom in closer. That's better. In this episode, we are zooming in to examine the smallest molecule in the universe. How small is hydrogen gas exactly? And why does it even matter? Zoom in with us for this episode of H2 Minutes. If you've been a follower of H2 Minutes for a while, this content may seem familiar. We covered this topic in episode five all the way back in 2016. It's one of our favorites, so we wanted to give it a makeover and add some more information. Before we begin, we have to say thank you to our community on Patreon for supporting our channel. We're so grateful for the people that believe in what we do and want to get behind it. If you want to join us in our mission, check out our Patreon page. You can also give a one-time donation via our Square account. Those links will be in the description. Okay, so let's get to the small talk. Hydrogen gas, molecular hydrogen, H2, is just two protons and two electrons. It is approximately 50 picometers wide. A picometer is one trillionth of a meter. In terms of size, a picometer is down here. To put this into perspective, a grain of salt is a half of a millimeter or 500 micrometers. A red blood cell is eight micrometers. The influenza virus is 130 nanometers. DNA is only 2.5 nanometers wide. And then there is hydrogen gas, which is only 50 picometers. I told you it was small. Time for some audience participation. I need you to get one single strand of hair. Whether it's from your head or not, I won't judge. Hold it in your fingers like this and look at how wide it is. Not very wide at all, right? So check it. You can fit approximately 3 million hydrogen molecules across the width of a single strand of hair. Did I just blow your mind or what? In terms of other molecules and or antioxidants, H2 is two and a half times smaller than oxygen and 16 times lighter, 20 times smaller than vitamin C and 87 times lighter. 61 times smaller than vitamin D and 190 times lighter, 132 times smaller than Q10 and 427 times lighter. It is so small and so light, which makes it so unique to have the potential health benefits that it does. So let's zoom in a little closer. Here, I have a glass of hydrogen water. There is 500 milliliters or 16.9 ounces of water around 1.6 milligrams per liter or PPM of dissolved hydrogen gas in this water. If you don't know what milligrams per liter or PPM means, I made a video explaining what it is and why it's so important to understand hydrogen rich water. So that would mean that there is approximately 0.8 milligrams of hydrogen gas dissolved into this water. So let's be real, that doesn't sound like very much. And it really isn't, especially compared to beverages such as soda, which contains dissolved carbon dioxide gas. An ordinary can of soda can have a concentration of 6,000 milligrams per liter or ppm of dissolved carbon dioxide gas, which would be around 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams of CO2. So that makes 0.8 milligrams of H2 seem minuscule. But in this glass of hydrogen water at a concentration of 1.6 ppm, there is approximately 212 quintillion H2 molecules in this glass. That is 212 followed by 18 zeros. That is an astronomically big number. If we turn every hydrogen molecule in this glass into pennies, we would have enough pennies to fill the Grand Canyon 25 times. Okay, that's a lot, so let's think smaller. Let's say we just take a teaspoon of water from this glass. Remember, the water is at a concentration of 1.6 milligrams per liter or ppm, meaning this teaspoon only contains 0.0078 milligrams of H2 or 7.8 micrograms of H2. In this itty bitty teaspoon, there will be approximately 2.3 quintillion H2 molecules. That is the number 23 followed by 17 zeros. Still, way too big of a number to understand or wrap your head around. So again, let's turn all the H2 molecules in this teaspoon into pennies. Okay, so let me give you some examples of just how many pennies this would be. So, I live in the state of Kansas, so we'll start there. That many pennies will cover the entire state of Kansas 3,192 times. Keep in mind that is every penny touching the next penny laying flat 
creating a layer of pennies. That many pennies was stacked vertically 16 feet high. The pennies would be taller than two of me. That many pennies would cover the entire United States 69 times with a layer of pennies over four inches high. That many pennies would cover the entire continent of Africa 22 times with a layer of pennies 1.2 inches high. And that many pennies would cover the entire continent of Asia 16 times with a layer of pennies one inch high. If the number of hydrogen molecules from a teaspoon from this hydrogen water were turned into pennies, there would be enough pennies to cover the entire surface of the earth. Now, I think I have fully demonstrated how small hydrogen is and how light it is. You don't need much of it to have many molecules of it. But why is this information about its size and weight so important? Because this means that no area in the human body is off limits to hydrogen. H2 is the most bioavailable molecule that exists. Not only because it's so small, but it's also neutral in its charge. Because of this, hydrogen has the highest and the fastest diffusion rate out of any molecule. Nonpolar neutral H2 is assumed to have health benefits facilitated by its passive diffusion across the human body immediately after administration and is considered a safe therapeutic inert gas that does not interfere with physiological enzymatic reactions. Because of these properties, H2 can cross all human barriers like the intestinal barrier, the skin barrier, the blood brain barrier, the placental barrier, the testis barrier, and the alveolar barrier in the lungs. Molecular hydrogen has superior distribution properties due to it being small, electrically neutral, and nonpolar. Thus, H2 can easily penetrate biomembranes such as the blood brain barrier, placental and testis barrier, and reach target organs such as the brain and organelles such as the mitochondria and nucleus. We did a video on hydrogen for general brain health, and we discussed in more depth the benefit of hydrogen being able to penetrate the blood brain barrier. Go check that one out for more info and also the three other videos in our Hydrogen for the Brain series. H2 can also diffuse into the smallest compartments of our cells, like the organelles, the mitochondria, and even the cellular nucleus. Since molecular hydrogen can penetrate cell membranes due to its electrical neutrality and low molecular weight, Many studies have suggested that the hydrogen gas can diffuse into organs immediately after supply. Molecular hydrogen's high biomembrane penetration and intracellular diffusion capabilities enable it to reach subcellular compartments like mitochondria. A2 can easily diffuse through our intestines into systemic circulation via the portal vein faster than any other molecule. Another reason why this is so important is because H2 can go where other vitamins and antioxidants can't go. Did you know that our brains are very susceptible to oxidative stress? Things like glucose, sodium, nicotine, alcohol, and some drugs can get through to the brain. But many vitamins and antioxidants cannot. Let's look at some more quotes. Moreover, H2 passes through the blood-brain barrier, although most antioxidant compounds cannot. Vitamins are organic compounds that are traditionally assigned to two groups, fat-soluble or hydrophobic or water-soluble and hydrophilic. H2 has the capabilities to penetrate biomembranes and diffuse into the cytosol, mitochondria, and nuclei due to its distribution characteristics, including being able to rapidly penetrate vessel walls and being able to dissolve into water or saline. By contrast, the majority of hydrophilic antioxidants cannot penetrate biomembranes and remain on the surface. Most hydrophilic antioxidants cannot penetrate biomembranes but remain on the membrane surface, whereas H2 can be distributed rapidly into lipids and cytosol and has no cytotoxicity even at high concentrations. Most hydrophilic compounds retain at membrane and cannot reach the cytosol whereas most hydrophobic ones cannot penetrate biomembranes in the absence of specific carriers. In contrast, H2 can rapidly distribute into cytosol and organelles. You can check out this video to learn more about free radicals and oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is thought to play a primary role in a variety of diseases, including cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and eye diseases such as cataracts 
or age-related macular degenerations. So a healthy level of antioxidants and counteracting that oxidative stress is necessary. However, research has not shown antioxidant supplements to be beneficial for preventing diseases. In fact, concerns have not been raised about the safety of antioxidants in food. However, high dose supplements of antioxidants may be linked to health risks in some cases. Supplementing with high dose of beta carotin may increase the risk of lung cancer in smokers. Supplementing with high dose of vitamin E may increase the risk of prostate cancer and one type of stroke. There are so many reasons to start using H2 in your daily routines. I hope this video just gave you a couple more. Be sure to share this video with your friends and like and subscribe to our channel. Also, make sure you hit the notification bell to know when we put out new content. And that was your tiny but mighty dose of H2 within minutes.